Hey, this is Rachel Cunningham, and you're listening to Joyful Love, episode 94. If you're ready to bring joy and connection back to your marriage, stick around. Each week, I give you the tools to up-level your thinking, open your heart, and bring joy and fun back to your relationship. Because it's not enough just to stay married. We want to love being married. Today, we are going to be talking about being your partner's best friend. So last week, we talked all about being your own best friend. This week, we're going to bring in our partners back in and and talk about how we can be a better friend to our partners. But first of all, before I go into that, last week, I told you guys about this dog that showed up on our back porch. And I told you that I would tell you a little bit more about that this week. So I want to really just, you know, tell you the whole story. So Two years ago, my son at the age of 16 said, mom, I want a dog for my 18th birthday. And so we had been planning a little bit, you know, a little bit like wishy-washy planning to get him a dog around the summer of his 18th birthday. He turned 18 last week. However, this summer came and I was just like, oh, I am just not feeling the dog thing. So I was just quiet about it. I thought maybe he doesn't really want a dog. Maybe, maybe it's not the right time. Maybe, you know, maybe we could wait until he's closer to moving out on his own. Right. Because I was just not in the mindset of welcoming another dog into our home at this time. But my son really, really wanted a dog. (laughs) So cut to two weeks ago. Let's see, as I'm recording this, I'm recording this on the 15th. And so on August 1st, this little great big puppy, I say a little puppy because he was only about, he's only about four months old, but he's great big because he's probably a great Dane pit bull mix. Not a dog I would cho- would have chosen for myself, by the way, but he shows up on our back porch where we can, where my husband and my middle son, Milo, are looking at him from the kitchen window. And they're they're just looking out the window. And there's this dog staring up at them in the window. Like he's been there forever. Like he like he's just part of the family and he's waiting to be let inside. Um and my husband said it was just so strange because he just was just looking at them like, are you gonna let me in? And uh so anyway, my my husband and 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 Milo went out there to to see him and kind of just see what was going on. And he looked a little bit skinny, like he'd been on his own for a little bit, Uh, but we couldn't, they couldn't tell if he was lost or just like roamed over from a neighbor's yard or anything. So we kind of just, you know, ignored it, went about our day for a little bit. And then, um, but the dog just stayed there all day. He didn't leave. He didn't, you know, he he didn't act like he was on his way anywhere. He wasn't looking for anything. He was just on our back porch looking in the window all day long. So finally that night we gave him some water and uh, we we actually put him in a little crate um, on on the back porch. Actually, I think that was the second night. We didn't put him in a little crate yet. Um, we just kind of waited and watched and and my son Elliot the one who turned 18 he came home that night late and he was like oh what's that dog on the back porch and we were like we don't know like it's you know it's just there and we're just going to deal with it in the morning we're going to you know call animal control see if there's a lost dog and all of that so anyway Elliot went to sleep we all went to sleep this dog's hanging out on our back porch and Elliot wakes up the next day and says, I wonder if Moose is still here. That was his first thought. I wonder if Moose is still here. And he came downstairs and told me that. And he was like, I I just wondered if Moose was still here. Is he still here? And I said, Moose. And he said, yeah, I guess that's his name because that's the first thought I had in the morning. And uh, so, so I was like, okay, Moose is a perfect name for that dog. And uh, sure enough, Moose is still here. So anyway, Elliot went out to meet this dog and he immediately just like started interacting with him and falling in love with him. Uh, We ended up bringing the dog inside, of course, to because obviously this dog uh, was not just wandering over from a neighbor's house. He was lost. Or as I like to say, he realized when he got to our house, he was found. Uh, But 
So we ended up deciding a lot of times me and Elliot, when we walk into other people's houses with, with uh, short haired dogs like this, along those same breeds, a lot of times uh, our allergies go haywire. So we decided that we would test out this dog for a couple of weeks. Uh, we went through all the proper channels of, you know, going to animal control, posting his picture everywhere, making sure he's not lost and nobody ever claimed him. And so basically we ended up fostering this dog for a few weeks, uh, basically auditioning him to make sure he was a good fit for our family, make sure our, our other dog and our cat could get along with him, making sure our allergies could handle him, all of that. And just to cut to a you know long story short, we are officially adopting this dog. Uh, and we don't know how big he's going to get, but we just decided this dog chose us for a reason. Um, I fully believe, like my son, my son Elliot is so, um, he is so in tune with life. He is so in tune with, with, you know, creating things that he wants. Um, and, and I've, I've, I've seen evidence of this for so long for him. So I fully believe that that kid manifested a freaking dog <laughs> and it's so beautiful to watch. And it's, it's just like, you know, this dog's personality and, and, uh, just the way he is, he's, he, I call him, you know, he's a, he's like a gentle giant, um, and until he gets really playful with our mini schnauzer and then he's he doesn't know how big he is so we're gonna have to train him we're gonna have to to uh make sure that he gets some really good training and so that he can continue being the sweet beautiful amazing dog that he is and he's perfect for our son he is perfect and my son couldn't be more thrilled he's excited to take responsibility he's excited to to really own that this is his dog that he's going to care for and um and so i that's our story we have this new dog dynamic in our family um it's thrown off my mornings uh i used to wake up and have you know slow gentle meditation mornings and right now I am figuring out how to welcome that back in as I, as I, you know, cause as soon as I walk downstairs, it's, you know, both dogs are greeting me now, not just our elderly mini, mini schnauzer greeting me with, you know, gentleness, but this big massive puppy who's only going to double in size, possibly even triple in size. Um, but he is just like so excited to see me and and right now it feels so good. It feels so right. And it, and it's, it's an exciting time, right? Um, it's an exciting time to, to welcome a new dog into our family when we had no idea that was coming. Um, and, you know, and, and just in the, in the beautiful, just kind of almost mystical way that it all happened. Um, my son wanted a dog for his 18th birthday. Two weeks before his 18th birthday, a dog shows up. It's just absolutely amazing. So that's what we're doing right now in our personal life. I thought I would let you in on that a little bit. I know sometimes, um, sometimes you like to know what's going on in my personal life. So that's that's what we're dealing with. So let's talk about being our partner's best friend this week. Um, you know, this is so important because. The best marriages are the ones that are supportive and connected and trusting and fun, right? So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about being our partner's best friend um, because studies have shown, so many studies have shown that the, the best marriages are the ones that feel like a true, solid friendship. And so, you know, and I, and I know that a lot of times people will come to me and say, we are, you know, we're just kind of like friends living in, a, in the same house and they need to work on that more intimate connection. But I love it when they say that they are super supportive friends and they're connected and, and they have all that going for them because when you have that solid foundation, it's so much easier to kind of look at the intimate uh, the intimacy issues and say, okay, let's build from there. Let's go from there. But if you don't have that friendship in place, we have to start 
there. We can't ignore that. So this is important. So that's why today I am going to teach you five tips to keep your friendship alive or to start rebuilding it again. These five tips can meet you anywhere where you're at. So if you feel like you have a solid friendship, these are five things to keep in mind to keep nurturing and growing that friendship. If you feel like you've you've fallen off the friendship wagon and you can't even like be in the same room with each other, let's bring these back in so that you can start creating that again. Okay, the, the tip number one is to keep being curious about each other. Ask a lot of questions of each other. Um, and you know, you don't have to constantly bombard your, your, your partner with questions, but even just like one or two unique questions a week can help you to continue realizing that there is so much mystery about your partner that you can still uncover. There's so much uh, stuff that you can dig into about their past, about what their dreams are and all of that. Um, and, and it can be done through simple questions, right? So like even thinking about the past, you can just ask them like what, what kind of dynamics did they have in their family and ask them what that was like. So, so what, what, is it, what was it like to be an only child? right? Or what was it like for you to be part of eight siblings, right? That was my story. I have eight siblings. And, and so what was it, you know, it's, it's always nice to think about that. What, what was it like to, to have eight siblings, to be in the middle of, of eight siblings? And my husband was uh, part of four siblings, just like asking your question, your, your partner about their family dynamics. What was it like to be in a household where maybe your parents were divorced. Um, think about like those things that are unique to your partner and just ask them, what was it like for you growing up? That's a great question. Um, and then another question is, you know, you can like bring in current events, like what is happening in your partner's life right now? What's happening at work? Did they recently get a promotion? Did they recently get laid off? Like, how do you ask them, how do you feel about this change? How do you feel about your promotion? How do you feel about this potential promotion? Or how do you feel about getting laid off? What, what are your thoughts today? Right, Just asking those questions about current events uh, so that they know you care about what's going on and that you're not just, you know, not just going from step to step of, of what are we doing today? What's the next thing that we have to do to survive, right? Can you slow it down a little bit and just ask some questions of how they're doing? What are they feeling about life right now? so important and and it keeps that curiosity alive it keeps the 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 dynamics of you wanting to understand what's going on with your partner it keeps that alive and it helps them to know oh my partner genuinely cares about me right so curiosity get curious ask questions that's tip number 1 tip number 2 is welcome fondness right? If you think about like your best friend, you're probably fond of them in some way. You're, you're, you, you love them, you care about them, but you're also, you also like them, right? So, so can you bring in some of that like and some of that fondness again for your partner? Uh, one way to show this is through just like noticing the things about your partner that you like. Sometimes we get so busy that we forget to notice those things that we like. So notice the things about your partner that you like and show them through affection and verbal affirmation that you're still into them. Like let them know, hey, I'm still into you, right? Um, and you know, in the beginning, everything is mind blowing about our partners. It's like, oh my gosh, I love them so much. I remember like, um, and this probably shows a little bit of my age. When I first met Chris, um, I, I started dating him when I was 18. And I remember those feelings were so intense. I admired him so much. And I was so excited about this new relationship with this man that I totally was into that I could hardly eat, right? My normal, I, I worked at an ice cream shop during that time in the beginning of our relationship. And I remember I would I would always eat lunch there and I would fix myself a grilled cheese sandwich and then I would get myself a, a milkshake afterwards. And 
like during the first time that Chris and I started dating, my feelings were so intense that I couldn't eat. I was just like, I can't eat. I'm, I'm so in love and so excited about this new relationship. Right. So in the beginning, everything is mind blowing. And then after a while, these things that were mind blowing about our partners just kind of blend into everyday life. So, so I encourage you just kind of think about those things. Like don't, don't let it blend in and just blend into the background any longer, right? Think about those things that you still admire about them and pay them compliments, you know, tell them that, that, you know, you love their eyes with that shirt that they're wearing, right? Like, just like allow, allow yourself to notice and then verbally express that. Highlight their qualities, highlight their good qualities that, that they still have, maybe that have nothing to do with their looks, but, but they still have that, that you admire, uh, take a moment to actually notice it and highlight it again, right? So if they're kind of easygoing in, in some way that you're not, let them know that you appreciate that, right? Like you're so easygoing in this area. Um, I, I, I'm so grateful for that, right? Or if they can come home and have fun with the kids or or have fun with the kids on the weekends, like highlight that, let them know, oh, I appreciate so much how easy it is for you to just like get on the floor and play with the kids, right? Or whatever is unique to your partner, highlight that and, and show them gratitude. Say thank you often. I don't think you can say thank you too much at all, right? And, and just like showing that, that appreciation for them. Okay, tip number three is to welcome in more fun. So when was the last time that, that you did something spontaneous with your partner? Uh, when was the last time that you did something new in the bedroom? Like what, how can you spice things up? How can you like bring in some more fun in the bedroom in and out of the bedroom, right? Uh, when was the last time that you belly laughed together? Uh, maybe if it's been a while and you, you're like, I don't even know where to start. I, I love to encourage people to, to go watch a comedy show together, either live or just on Netflix, right? Like do something that is fun, that will help you to be present in the moment and just laugh together. Um, if that doesn't sound like fun, if you're like, I just need to relax right now, I'm so stressed out and I'm so pent up, maybe your fun could be saying, Let's go do a spa day together. One of the places, there's a place here in Nashville that's called the um, the Holiday Bath House, and it's it's so amazing. It's got um, it's got this huge, almost like a, a swimming pool sized tub, like a hot tub, and it's so it's so amazing because you can rent out the entire place just by yourself. So occasionally, Chris and I will rent that place out. It's got a it's got the big hot tub and it's got it's got a cold shower, it's got a sauna. So sometimes we'll go there and we'll rent it out just for a couple hours with just for just the two of us when we need to relax and we just need to be like, oh, nothing out, nothing in our life matters except this moment together. Right. So see if there's something like that in your town. Like rent, rent out something that you can just like really connect and and relax together. That I think relaxing is fun. <laughs> So fun doesn't always have to be this huge, exciting stuff. It can also be like, what sounds genuinely fun? Something to relax together, maybe. Or you could go on a hike or you could tell each other embarrassing stories that happened to you as a child or as a teenager, right? Like anything like that, that can welcome in a little bit of fun, prioritize that. Keep it simple at first if you need to, right? Okay, so that was tip three, to have some more fun. Tip number four, to build a best friend relationship with your partner is to connect regularly. And this is a little bit different than having fun. I mean, connect with your hearts. Even when you're busy, you can kind of look at your calendar and decide on one day per week or even half a day per week where you will prioritize family connection over anything else right? Over anything else being either work or home life or the dishes or the laundry or grocery shopping, all of those things have to be a part of your life. Yes. But can you cut out half a day every single week that you say, this day is just for connection. 
It's just for sitting on the sofa and lounging around and doing nothing except talking or going on a hike together or doing something that connects our hearts, right? Let half a day at least every week be a time where you prioritize connection. So find small ways to connect too, even just, you know, taking your dog for a walk together or, or, you know, having a few regular connection points throughout the week that can work wonders, even just 20 minutes, um, find time to talk about your life and your feelings. Allow that. Right. I used to have a client, um, who she was having a very hard time finding that half day. And so we said, okay, let's start small. Where can you start to build connection? And she said, maybe on Saturday mornings, maybe on Saturday mornings, I can just start to allow myself to linger in bed a little bit longer and start embracing this idea of heart to heart connection. And Saturday mornings ended up becoming a beautiful thing for them where they they had deeper connection talks where they were just snuggling and allowing themselves to like talk about their weeks and talk about their feelings on certain things. And then a lot of times they would throw in some sexy time fun on those Saturday mornings too, because it was, it was a time when they, you know, their kids were sleeping in and they were in the habit of waking up a little bit early still. And so that worked for them. So find what works for you. Where is one time a week where you can connect heart to heart with your partner. That is so important. Okay. So tip five is trust and support. So best friends trust each other. You trust each other to have each other's backs. You trust each other to help you through the difficult times in life. And there's give and take in this, right? Sometimes one partner will support each other more than the other. And and then other times it's going to be flipped. Most of the time, both partners don't have 100% to give. Sometimes one is more exhausted than the other, and that's normal, right? So, um, but we want to be able to trust each other to have our backs and to support each other no matter how difficult those times are. Now, if you don't trust each other in certain areas, do what a friend would do and work on this area, intentionally work on this area. You know, so many times, I think even in friendships, we do this. If there's something that needs to be worked on, we just abandon it and go, oh, this is too hard. And we we avoid. But what does a true friend do? What does a true friend who wants to maintain a friendship do when something is not perfect in the area? We communicate about it openly. We say, okay, this is an area of growth for us. Let's communicate about it. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trusting you in this area. I want to, let's work on that. Or you're not trusting me in this area. Let's work on that and start there. So if there are areas that you don't trust each other, whether it's, you know, with infidelity or just trusting that your partner will take out the trash, right? Like sometimes when we talk about trust, we think about uh, the, like the infidelity issue, right? Or the cheating on each other, you know, if, but that's not the only place where we want to trust our partners. We want to trust our partners to help us in life. We want to trust our partners, you know, to take out the trash if if that's something that that you have agreed upon or to remember to pick up the kids. You want to 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 build that trust in each other and maybe there's an area where you know, your partner is having a hard time with those things, or maybe you're having a hard time with certain things and you're not trusting each other to do what you said you would do. This is an area of work and growth for you. Can you drop the criticism for a minute and just say, okay, this is an area of growth for us. We need to learn how to trust each other again. We need to learn how to have each other's backs in this life. Not just with knowing we're not going to cheat on each other, but with knowing that we can support each other in our everyday lives. So trust doesn't just always magically happen, but it can be worked on. It can be created. It can be an area of growth that you can that you can grow in intentionally. I also want to talk about, you know, supporting your partner, right? Part of part of trust is knowing that your partner supports you. So supporting your partner might be something fun like a dream, right? Supporting them in in pursuing a dream that they've had for a while or it might be the kind of 
support that you offer during hard times. One of my clients, I'm going to tell you two different stories of this. One of my clients just encouraged her husband to buy a camper van that he's been wanting for a very long time. It's really, so this is just a side note. It's surprising how many clients I have whose husbands want a camper van. I think it's the new, uh, it's the new midlife goal. I think like it used to be like, like back in the nineties, you would think of like the husband's going through a midlife crisis and getting, getting like a little sports car. Now it's husbands hit 40 and they want a camper van, which is amazing. But, you know, anyway, this, this client of mine, her husband has been wanting a camper van for a while and she decided to just kind of go, let's do it. Go for it right? Instead of like holding back and being scared about money, she was like, let's do it. Let's, let's figure out the finances and let's do it. So he was thrilled uh, with that encouragement. And he just bought his dream van last week, which is so much fun, right? Like that's support. It's, it's just like you would with a best friend. If your best friend came to you and said, oh my gosh, I want this camper van. I dream about having weekends, you know, to, to do this. And And it would be so much fun. You would be like, oh my gosh, you should totally do that. But sometimes when it's our husbands or our partners who have the dream, a lot of fear creeps up and it's harder to say, go for it. So my encouragement to you would be to welcome in that trust and support to encourage your partner in their dreams this week. Another client is... Finding new ways to support and encourage her husband while he struggles with depression. Um, And, you know, this is a different kind of support, right? It's super fun to support your partner in their dreams sometimes, but it's not always super fun to be the support and the encouragement for a partner who struggles with some mental health challenges or depression. And, but being that person is another way to really be a friend to your partner. You know, um, we can't predict what our brains go through and what our hormones go through and what, what different phases of life we go through. We cannot predict it for ourselves and we cannot predict it for our par- partners. And, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we do have to deal with partners who are struggling deeply with mental health issues. So, this is marriage, right? This is love. This is that deep, supportive, trusting love that we all want that, that supports us during the fun, exciting times and that supports us during the, the really difficult times. So I encourage you, buy, dig deep, find that love and support for your partner, whether it's something fun or whether you're going through a difficult time with each other. So that's deep love. It goes beyond the romance and the puppy love that I felt in the beginning when I was, you know, I couldn't even eat because I I was so like excited about this new relationship, right? And, but, but the deeper genuine friendship love, the best friend love that we all want in our relationships goes beyond that. And it is, you know, it's, that kind of love, that deep love, that, that's what creates that best friend energy, right? It's, and it's best partner friends for life energy. And it's beautiful. And I just encourage you guys to, to, to work on these five tips. The more you can cultivate these five tips in your relationship, the better friends you will be. And here's why we work on this. This is why being friends comes first, because when you are friends, it makes everything else so much easier. It makes creating those sexy times so much easier. It makes it makes navigating the difficult times in life so much easier. And yes, it takes effort. You cannot maintain a good friendship or a good marriage without putting in some effort. You can choose the effort of creating a joyful and healthy marriage and you can reap the benefits or you can choose not to put in the effort. It's your choice. No one has, no one is going to tell you exactly what to do here, right? But if you're going to be in a marriage, if you are going to be part of a marriage and you are choosing to stay in this marriage, 
I encourage you not to stay in exhaustion and annoyance and frustration, not one more day, right? Choose to choose to put in the effort to create friendship first. Choose to, to find at least one of these tips to focus on this week, right? The choice is yours. You can stay frustrated and exhausted, or you can put in the effort and create a really beautiful marriage that feels good to be in. Okay. I know that for some of you, this sounds way too challenging and you're having a hard time figuring out how to actually take these skills that I teach and the suggestions that I make on the podcast and make them stick, right? For longer than like two minutes. So how do you get out of your own hangups and struggles and, and actually create a relationship with your partner that feels like you are best friends? Maybe you've got so much resentment and criticism built up that, that you're not sure where to start. If this is you, if you want a BFF relationship with your spouse, but you're struggling to connect, I want you to head over to rachelcunningham.com. Rachel is spelled with an A-E-L and click on the free course to better connection class. It's free and you'll learn my top tip to start creating better connection today. That will also put you on my email list so that you can get weekly inspiration to do this work and, and start the journey of creating a marriage that you love being in. And if you have a friend who could use some help in her marriage too, I encourage you to share the love. Just send her this podcast, copy the link, send her the podcast and say, hey, bestie, I thought you could use this as much as I can. All right, she will appreciate it. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna go take this these beautiful dogs for a walk. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Joyful Love. If you'd like to know more about my work, come visit me at rachelcunningham.com. That's Rachel spelled with an A-E-L, cunningham.com.